Hello, my name is Huey Long, and welcome to my second video on Power and Revolution, playing as Angola. Uh, first of all, I'd like to apologize for the audio issues in the first video. It seemed like there was an issue with my actual speaker. It, it there, there was some, some setting uh, problem that needed to be resolved. And then secondly, I wanted to address my kind of like random lectures. That's just something I do and kind of... That's something I enjoy doing, so, you know, if, if you don't like it or if it's not your, to your style, you know, there, there are other channels around and, you know, I, I can't really imagine a lot of people are even watching this anyway, so, if you're here, nice to see you again, hope you enjoy my second video. So, last where we left off with Angola, we had just in invested into the chicken industry. The reason being that Nigeria, uh, another oil exporting nature, a nation in South Af in uh, Sub-Saharan Africa, also invested in its chicken industry in the late 1970s because at that time you had the influx of non-OPEC oil into the market which reduced and dropped the oil prices. So Nigeria's economy almost went for a tumble. So their military uh, government at the time decided to invest in the growth of its chicken industry which would provide hard cash for the Nigerian economy in the face of decreasing oil exports and also it provided a vital source of protein through the actual meat of the chicken and their eggs to low-income families and middle strata throughout the country. So I wanted to do the same here in Angola and if we take a look at our farming industry I wanna I don't remember the exact number of how much I invested in. But if we look at fowl over here, subsidized, it's currently half half a billion dollars investment and it's tax exempt. So we're trying to increase that, you know, the 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 employment and opportunities offered by the chicken industry. This is to once again get vital protein to the Angolan people, uh, start uh, kind of creating uh, another industry besides oil and most importantly start rebuilding the agricultural industries which were destroyed during the Civil War. Now I did a little bit of research and looked a little bit into Angola's geography and if you notice over here I have subsidized the coffee industry. I subsidized 23 million. Uh, I probably should actually change that to let's do 250 million. So I, I'm going to subsidize 250 million to the coffee industry because if we look at Angola, we'll notice that it's actually in the coffee belt. And there's a lot of other coffee producers here, Ethiopia, Yemen, Indonesia, Sri Lanka. Well, Sri Lanka was formerly, formerly a coffee producer, not so much. Brazil, uh, Colombia, Colombia, <laughs> not trying to be racist, uh, and uh, I think Kenya and, Tan uh, Kenya and Tanzania also produce coffee I want to say so I'm trying to break into the coffee industry I didn't give it a tax exemption because I want to get some profits from it and just kind of see how well it does by itself while the chicken industry is really being supported um, now there's an issue I noticed when I was looking at my trade um, if we look at actually our trade for farming you can see that now First of all, let me explain. When it says annual purchase, that means the country's uh, buying from us. So if we look over here, detailed assessment, sale price is close to our usual rates, whatever, right? So the sale is that we are buying from another country. So we're buying currently milk from Russia, sugar from Montenegro. I don't even know how they're producing sugar. Uh, we are also buying a sugar from Eritrea. That was for diplomatic purposes. I wanted to increase my relations with Eritrea. Now, the reason I'm bringing this up is that as Angola, we don't really want to trade a lot. We want to create a protectionist, isolated market. The issue is that we are a member of the WTO. And the WTO supports unregulated, or at least minorly regulated, free trade. And because we're a member of the WTO, that means that when we don't engage in trade uh, as much, when we don't engage in trade or free trade deals, they won't like us as an organization. And you could already see our influence, uh, well, this is their organizational influence, but currently, current popularity, I don't know if there's, 
we could we could make a meeting with the WTO general and see what he thinks about us. Um, we're not really supporting the WTO for a lot of the reason being that a lot of colonial countries and developing countries are taken advantage by the rules by the which the WTO WTO promotes by multinational companies. Because once again, as I mentioned in the last video, these countries have extremely weak economies. Angola is one of them. Our oil industry, which is our most profitable, once again, as I've already discussed, is not even uh, under our control. It's not even partially nationalized. It's completely under the control of multinational corporations. All we're responsible for doing is expanding oil production sites. Now, keeping that in mind, uh, we don't want to get kicked out of the WTO because that allows other members to even make trade deals with us. Uh, or at least favorable favorable trade deal. So if we want to get even the limited trade that we want, we're going to have to stick to being a member of the WTO. We could always rely on being a member of OPEC. Uh, if we look, we're also part of several South, uh, African development communities, which unfortunately do not have a lot of influence, as you can see. These are one-star, half-a-star organizations. So... <laughs> We'll keep an eye and see how well these are doing, but really, once again, the focus will remain in Gola. So currently, we are actually going through an election season, which means that if I go, say, to the capital, I can't start housing construction as I normally do. It has to be, if I were to do it, it would come off as a campaign promise, I believe. Oh, never mind. I think we're just in time that it's not a campaign promise. But should be starting soon for a uh, that we can't do that as a, like just a regular activity. We have to do it as a campaign promise. In the meantime, I'd like to go over the kind of uh, I'm going to play this and like to go over the agreements we have with the WTO. First of all, I want to go into my Secret Service and start infiltrating our terrorist organizations. So before they start getting out of whack. Let's preempt that and start intervening. Anyway, so 1994 Marrakesh Agreement was an agreement on agricultural made between the members of the WTO and um, essentially, yeah, between members of the WTO. It includes the following articles, and there's more. Oh, hold on, here's our meeting. Um, I'll pause. No restrictions on imports other than tariffs, so we can't set up any other price barriers. We, there are price safeguards for import surges, so if America, which has a competitive advantage in growing corn, because it's heavily subsidized, decides to dump corn on the Angolan market, and we have a native corn industry, then we're allowed to set up price controls to prevent our corn industry from being destroyed. We are required as a developing country, or not required so much, but pushed to have a 10 to 24 percent reduction in tariffs over 10 years. Uh, we need uh, export subsidies are subject to reduction, and if we're competitive in a certain food stuff, then we're not allowed to be we're not allowed to tamper with that agricultural production. So we can't subsidize it. We can't give it a tax exempt status. We can't give it preferential treatment. Now, this agreement supports agricultural exports on a global scale throughout the world, but the issue is that it mostly benefits middlemen, uh, so traders, uh, not traders as in like people who are portraying, but like, you know, uh, merchants and stuff like that. So not really benefiting Angola and uh, our people, so we're trying to stay away from that. Now, a consequence of me spending so much money on infrastructure because I was hoping to reduce the price of goods and make just generally things cheaper in Angola um, with the hope that with economic empowerment we could actually lower taxes in the future. The issue by increasing spending on infrastructure is that we open up to foreign entities who actually could exert influence in Angola. So retail chains, supermarkets, uh, electronics companies, People who are not owned or operating by Angolan rules can use the infrastructure that we're developing to spread their influence at our kind of expense. Anyway, so... The funeral will take place next week. So our Protestant leader has died. Oh. Please, 
Let's stop this childish gossip and concentrate on the important questions. Okay, so he's not exactly happy with me. Yes, I know, I know. In fact, I'm an exceptional being, and I've had this premonition ever since I was born. So he's a bit of an asshole. Right, I think that's all then? So I'll be leaving you. I have other fish to fry. Other fish to fry. Okay, so he's a bit of an asshole. Uh, we have a new price per barrel at $49. So the price is didn't decreasing, I assume because of the war. Here in the Middle East, which is still raging between Iran and the world, essentially. And then we have the war in North Korea. I, I don't think anyone's actually making any gains. It looks like a stalemate. Yeah. We have a couple of ships floating around. Oh, the, the U.S. has gotten involved. But anyway, hopefully those issues can be solved so this game can actually continue. Election the election campaign has officially begun. Okay, so the election campaign has now officially begun. So now I assume the housing will become campaign promises. Now last time I touched that, the game crashed. <laughs> so I'm not going to do anything, and I'm just going to let this election happen and see what exactly is going to essentially happen. I'm not familiar with the elections in this game, so I don't really want to touch anything for now. Okay, the funeral, and see how things go. Okay, election campaign. 28% of the vote. Alright. So we are infiltrating organizations. Now we'll see how this well this goes. I mean, I'm definitely interested in the election, but right now it's not really a huge thing for me. Uh, okay. So, really, I guess our goals in Angola will continue to be improving the domestic industry and making sure that we maintain internal stability. Oh, cash surplus. Uh, huh. So it looks like our terrorist organizations are finding a lot of money and influence in foreign foreign up uh, from foreign heads of state especially in the west it looks like at least it mentioned Czech, uh, Czechia at that time I think in the first video Finland was financing one of the organizations let's take a look at, look at our debt okay it's going down our highest debt amount is only 10 billion happiness is increasing bad figures for unemployment 6% that is more favor to ask I know it's rather delicate but you see my nephew has just been dismissed for economic reasons, and is currently employed. He's had hard times, and despite his efforts, he hasn't found anything interesting. He's rather gifted in his country, you know? It's not easy to get a job nowadays. I was wondering if you could lend me a hand with that. Whew. I don't see a problem there. One of my men succeeded. Hopefully that won't come and bite me in the butt. Uh, in previous games, I would actually go and assassinate certain members, and if the assassination failed, there was a, there was a chance that I would come under judicial review, I could be impeached, stuff like that. But because we're such an authoritarian country, I think in retrospect, I didn't really have to worry about that issue so much, kind of unfortunately or fortunately. Uh, God, the US really hates us. Disaster in Chile. Earthquake. You know what? Let's let's donate to Chile. Chile and see. Oh God, everything's a campaign promise right now. I don't want to touch anything because it crashed the game last time. I'm both scared of the election process and also I just don't want the game to crash in the middle of my video. So. Here is our growth forecast for the end of the year based on calculations that we made last month. This is a very good figure. Our economy is dynamic. Okay, so 14% growth. Unemployment stands at 7%, so it's generally increasing. Probably pushing us to reduce that. Ooh, what can we do? What can we do? Let's see, what is our industry like? Do we have any industry? We don't have any contracts. 
Let's see our industry info. Let's see GDP percent of our total. Electrical materials is our biggest one. Um, huh. Sales, profits, employment, 3.5 percent. Okay, so it's not. We're actually doing pretty well with that. I don't even. Hmm. It's interesting because we have such high taxes. I would have assumed that did not. It wasn't working. So electrical. What is it? What was it called? Electrical goods. Electrical materials. Sector info. Plastic, steel, copper, electricity. Actions. Let's subsidize this. And give them fifty million. And exonerate. We'll, uh, no, we won't exonerate them, so we'll keep it like that. So we're allowed to do that, even though we're in an election campaign, whatever. Whoa. Election campaign. It's true that the blow cannot really be described as fatal. Two arrests. But the three-way analysis that I have carried out, using the Watts model... Journalist kidnapped. All right, God, I just don't want to touch it. I, I'm too. I'm not gonna do it. I'm not gonna. Ooh. I can't really risk it for a biscuit now, can I? Not with the game about to crash if I touch even a single campaign thing. That's kind of horrible. I don't know why the game even crashed. I can't really test it. I'm not gonna do it over and over again as well. Okay, so they still like us. Oh, we also should talk about, or at least think about increasing public service. Uh, what's this? Uh oh, cyber attack. Uh, we should at least think about increasing civil servant salaries. So let's take a look at that. We'll do it as a campaign promise. You know what? Let's just, yeah, I'll risk it. We'll increase the salaries 500, 550, 100, 450, Why can't we? Oh, so we can only do one at a time. So I think we'll do education then. Increase the... 750 campaign promises. And we'll do it, we'll make the announcement in the capital. Okay. Oh, okay, that didn't do anything. So we're good with that. Alright. One of my men succeeded. Another infiltration, journalist kidnapping, doing well with anti-terrorist efforts. Our sportsmen are ready, but if I may, a few words of encouragement before the national team's departure would surely galvanize the troops. Do you agree? Mm. Yeah, so for our sports... I actually decided because I had a good enough budget surplus to start, like, uh, financing cultural activities. So if we take a look at culture, finance theater, dance, probably increase museums. So we'll make that a campaign promise. How about that? We'll do that in. Cabinda. Uh, yeah, there we go. And do that then. All right. So once again, what was the culture? So I increased financing for theaters to maximum. Dance, family films, art films, animation films, classical music, reading uh, for literature and comics, and photography. So I wanted to kind of give, start creating once again that revolutionary atmosphere in Angola. 
So I want to create like an ideology, a national culture, a sense of unity. So I want to increase those uh, activities. So criticism of the state, subject to censorship, criticism of religion, freedom of expression, violence, controls, and censorship. Uh, eroticism, censorship from my... Ooh, and everything's a campaign promise, so I don't want to actually touch that. Anyway, so, and then we go to the media. Uh, determine the level of freedom of information. Information controlled and censor. All channels are public. So there's no budgetary increase here. We also, as you can see, uh, in terms of telecommunications, we're not really that high. Uh, up there, in terms of percentage of our population, which is covered by it. Now for our sports, very different. As you can see over here, I increased the funding all throughout. Grassroots sports, so local level competition, competitive sport, development of sports in schools, development of university sports, sports for handicapped, fight against doping, various youth associations, holiday camps, help for underprivileged sectors, scout movements, and a national youth movement. So you can kind of see the direction I'm heading toward. Once again, we want unity. We want people to kind of start working together. Now our disciplines are mostly uh, track and field, rowing, baseball, basketball, boxing, cycling, horseback riding, fencing, football and soccer, gymnastics, weightlifting, swimming, rugby, I think that's it. So we're mostly looking for strength support, strength sports, uh, physical kind of endurance. We want We want to make it clear that it's about making this ideal <laughs> youth oh god it's so totalitarian building we have everything except for a multi-sports complex for 30,000 seats we should probably we could build one eventually we have a couple of swimming pools for some reason we have ice rinks i don't know what that's all about i don't know how we have ice rinks in angola which is a sub-saharan country located to located literally near one of the largest deserts in the world over here i forgot the name is it the Kalahari? I think it's the Kalahari. Don't quote me on that one. I'm, I'm, a bit, I'm a bit surprised about the ice rings. I don't know why there's so many ice rings as well. It's kind of remarkable. Oh, here we go. Competition will begin in a week. All our athletes are in top four. The fight will be harsh, but they will do their best to bring back medals and represent the country with dignity. So here's the thing, when you increase sports, there's a chance that when they go into national competition, international and I think there might be national competitions, you'll have a higher chance of success or coming away with something. So that's the reason. We want to increase little things to make Angola kind of known on the world stage. One of my men succeeded in infiltrating Key Center. Okay, so another infiltration. We'll keep on infiltrating them and keeping them on the you know, suppressed, though I wish we could actually eliminate them totally. So transportation, our spending is eh, negligible. We increase bike paths, water transport. We want to decongest a lot of things here. For Angola. Oh, here's our presidential address. National education must not be analyzed under the prism of spending, but has an investment in the future. It is the knowledge of our youth of today that will allow the takeoff of our growth tomorrow. To these ends, my policy will be a major focus of my term. Okay, so that was us announcing the increase in teacher salaries. Okay, our party is going to come second. What? It's true that the blue... This is not good, this is not good. Now I'm worried. Elections, program, campaign. Another campaign meeting. We will talk about research. For research, we will increase the public salary to 500. Campaign promise. There we go. What? Parliamentary.
country elections, this is the... Oh, God, this is bad. She's really popular. Uh, what do we do? What do we do? If this goes badly, we can lose an election in this game. Oh, no. Why? <laughs> Our culture is renowned and envied the world over. You can count on me to protect and develop it. It's crucial to us in all its diversity. Okay, so that was cultural campaign. I don't know exactly what that was for. Research is our economy's last hope. We must again and again promote innovation in order to win market shares. This is what our international competitors are doing, and this is what I will do through an ambitious public policy. Okay. So that was the another uh, salary increase. The campaign statements are not doing well for some reason. All right, let's look at taxes then. Oh, creation. Revenue. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. What's going on? Okay. The game was bugging or lagging there. Let's look at our revenue. So, value added tax. Let's eliminate it and make it a flat rate. Campaign promise. Performance hall. Do Cabinda. No, we'll do it. We'll stick in the capital. Go to actually no. Let's go out into the countryside. Go and make this statement. Sports center. All right. It's awful. No, no, it's not a suicide. There's no doubt about assassination. If only they could actually target our opposition. It's kind of horrible. Why can't the terrorists attack our opposition? Angola is a model country for the UN organization. Okay. Thank you. Congratulations. Your campaign agenda is excellent and caters to the entire electorate. Okay, that's surprising. You know, we're still not going to do well, it appears. You have a statement, sir. It's true that the bloke... Right. Keep up infiltration. Anti-terrorism is always popular. Purchasing power drives economic growth because consumption stimulates demand and this creates investment. Our fellow citizens will soon be back spending money in the shopping malls because I guarantee they will have the money to do so. Okay. That's lowering the value added tax. Available position for our ministers because one of them was killed. <laughs> kind of horrible, but whatever. UN. Again, our campaign promises are not doing well. No one likes our campaign statements. Why is that? Okay, what is this negative 100%? our elections. Alright, so we're slowly increasing. One of my and another terrorist infiltration. was killed. France has declared war on North Korea. Public fa finances remain pretty high. Let's look at our debt level. 2.3. It doesn't look like it's actually changing that much. I assume it'll change at the end of the year with the 
annual budget surplus or whatever. Maybe they do it by quarter. All right, let's increase the price per barrel to 90. What is the max? Oh, I think the max was 79. <laughs> Didn't properly look at that. Messed up on the screen there. Whoops. This grenade attack. Fragmentation grid. Right, the terrorists are kicking up the attacks, which I'm not happy about. Let's go to the police. <sighs> Strong ID checks. Let's put in surveillance cameras. Let's increase that amount to 10,000. We'll do that in Mexico. It's true that the Okay. I know how much public security is a strong preoccupation of our co-citizens. I could not compromise on this fundamental right, and I can assure you that it will remain one of my priorities. Okay. Oh. Our sportsmen are ready. But if I may... Alright, so another youth championship. Oh, my. Infiltrate. Another car bomb. Get a statement. Oh my god, this is this is gonna be rough. <sighs> Infiltrate. Let us put Can we put people under surveillance? Let's do terrorist work. Do that. No. Let's how do we South Africa and Sri Lanka are supporting him. How do we place someone under surveillance? Someone some friends. Other parties, I guess? We could assassinate. Let's put her under surveillance. See what we can dig up. I know it was supposed to be on terrorists, but we'll focus on her. Let's see, our election. Oh no. Country did not win any medals. No! <sighs> Things are not looking good right now. Alright, we're increasing our popularity. Competition will begin. Right, let's make another campaign promise. Theater venue. Kabinda. We will do it here. We'll be on. Mm, and let's do education. Teacher training, supervision, and guidance. No. What do we want to promise? Let's do increase renewal and maintenance. Yep. Campaign promise of those schools. See how that affects our popularity rating. Notifications. I kept pressing the X, that's why they wouldn't go away. Congratulations, you will count. Okay. Start cleaning up our notifications. So, we need to do 15 campaign promises at least. So, let's stick to that. Let's do candidates. 
program popularity. She's very popular, her program. Don't know what it is though. Budgetary impact. Number of rallies. She's held a lot more rallies. I've only held six. She's done thirteen. Okay, so I need to increase the amount of rallies. Let's campaign. Let's 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 campaign promise theater hall. Let's do another one. Confirm. We'll do Wednesday transportation. We'll do a construction of a subway. We'll do 1,800 people. And we'll do it over Luanda again. We'll need another campaign promise in Luanda North, which is, I think, Luanda North's over here. So we'll do another campaign promise. So we're just going to do all the maximum campaign promises. This is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It is the 17th, so we'll do it here. We will do housing, dilapidated housing, no, legislation. No, let's not do housing. Let's do immigration. I notice we haven't touched immigration. Establish integration policy. Regulate tourists. Visas mandatory campaign promise. We'll do another one in Rwanda Sul. This will also be over education. Education will be good because we actually need education. That's we need uh, to increase that. So we'll increase science training. Okay. Uh, I'm just gonna choose random regions right now. <laughs> Maybe this is actually how elections are run. Let's see. And we'll do taxation, increase tax on large fortunes. We'll put it up to 6%. Campaign promise. Uh, we're running out of money. Uh, Uwege, confirm. Over here, do research. Research is at a max. We will build one more. What's the max we can do? Okay. We will do Luanda again, campaign promise. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Still need, f what, 4 more? Alright, so here's our current promises. We have an education, museums, average monthly salary, value added tax, increasing the stock of surveillance, uh, cameras, regulating tourist visas, scientific training, renewal and maintenance of schools, tax on large fortunes, subway and tramway, and uh, built a, uh, building a new multidisciplinary center. We'll do at least a couple more. We should also actually... Uh, candidates... Let's look at our party. Can we look at our party? we need to increase funding. Mm, 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 mm. There we go. My party. Launch a fundraising campaign. We only have 331,000. Ooh, this is going to be bad. Okay, so we don't have a lot of money. of more promises and see what we can do from there. Program, campaign promise, select question, uh, launch this one, Friday, health, let's reimburse for hospital treatment. Actually, 
actually will leave that alone. Let's increase funding for maternity care. We could actually go quite a bit, can't we? Alright, there we go. Four million. Okay. Campaign funds. You do not have enough funds. We only have 10,000 left. Alright, those are all our campaign promises. See how that affects us. Okay. But are you crazy? You are screwing up the whole thing. Your job and your country. You cannot continue like this. The target is constantly on alert. Any Ugh. Surveillance is not gonna work. Campaign statements are apparently not very popular. <sighs> Can we decrease our change the modify the salary? We don't have enough money to even do that. It's a disaster here. Alright. One million dollars will make it go away with uh, five million. Campaign prom Oh my god, it's all campaign promises. Let's regulate tourist visas. When's the election? Congressional elections are the 29th. I'd like to congratulate you. Okay. What is the Secret Service doing? Come on, guys. This is bombings going on, and we're making several and multiple campaign announcements. Personal popularity. What's our price per barrel? Alright, $50. Alright, there we go. Renewal and maintenance. Are we increasing campaign candidates? Program popularity is not very high. Insecurity. Sorry about these news reports. I can't, we can't sit and listen and watch every single one of them. When's our actual election? Election is going to be on the 29th. So we'll go till the 29th and see what happens. So the, the day after, we'll look at the elections. Been a scandal. What scandal? Fifteen million people. One of mine. All right. Let's see. Let's see. Big day. One of mine. The election, guys. Here we are. Take a look at this. <gasps> oh gosh. Uh. Okay, so the fourth place guy is not even in the lead. Third place guy stopped. We stopped. Okay, she won. Thirty-eight percent of the vote. We got thirty. Oh god. My political program is pretty high. <sighs> this is not good. You were only popular with the military. What a surprise. So what's happening now? 76% of the population turned out. And we got a cultural prize. Incredible. Yay. The first price, can you believe it? 
All our cultural policy has been indirectly rewarded by this, and all the more because he has always supported your policies. Alright, so we got a cultural award. So what's gonna happen? Alright, well, I said I was going to end it there. Sorry, there's a lot of mumbling going around because the election was just so fast. Like I said, I'm unfamiliar with this. I didn't do any campaign funding, so I lost money there. I couldn't do as many campaign promises. So we'll see. We'll see how the rest of this game goes. There's a chance I might lose the election, and I'll have to go in as an opposition party. Uh, in which case, she will lead the country. Uh, the reason I'm kind of scared for this is that if we look at her, she's a liberal a democratic party. So that means they're going and supporting liberal policies like privatization, increased privatization, and opening up. We're a weak country, and honestly, who knows? She might be an agent of the West for all I know. Apparently she likes me, so maybe we should have a meeting after the televised debate. So we have a televised debate to look forward to, a meeting with the head of the opposition party who's technically winning, a Radical Red League, okay. And we'll have a meeting with the party secretary as well to talk about what's going on. We might actually talk to the other leaders as well. And goal is citizen movement and the Liberal Social Democratic Party. We could form a coalition with these parties, maybe. I don't know if that's even possible in this game. Anyway, all right, so that's besides the point. Uh, I'd like to thank you for watching this video, and uh, my name is Huey Long. Have a nice day.